Hi everyone, my name is Andrew, I am the 5pm chef, and welcome back into my kitchen. Today I just want to do a real quick, uh, simple, but really tasty pork tenderloin dish that I sort of got inspired by just pork chops with applesauce. Nice little comfort dish, something everyone loves, and it's nice enough that you can make it if you're having guests over. Yet it's quick and easy enough that you can easily do it coming home from work, 10 minutes of doing stuff, and you're all set. So why don't we just get right on into it? Uh, basically, we have a couple of apples. We've got some pancetta, which is just an Italian style of bacon. It's cured, but it isn't smoked. So, it's a little different, but it adds a nice little flavor. And what can be wrong with pork and pork? So, always fun. Uh, we're going to dice up a couple of apples. And I'm just going to show you a quick, simple way of doing it here. I hope this works. I'm trying out something new, and it seems to have. I don't peel my apples, I like the skin, I like the flavor it adds, and there's a lot of nutrients in there. So, you know what, if I can do that and help add some extra nutrition, all the better. The easiest way I find of doing it is just cut around the core. I've had about eight cups of coffee this morning, so I've got the jitters done. <laughs> I am just going to... Roughly chop this because they are going to break down when I cook. I noticed I had a bit of core there, so we'll leave that piece out. I've got my fry pan heating up on the side. The other nice thing is this dish is going to be one pan. As always, the fewer of the dishes I can make, the fewer dishes I have to clean, all the better. The hardest part is done. That's literally the hardest part of this entire dish, is cutting an apple. So anyone can do it. We're just going to move the cam over, or try to, so that we get our fry pan. Sorry if this is <laughs> making anyone dizzy. We're just waiting for that fry pan to heat up a bit. I always tend to cook in cast iron. First of all, it conducts heat really, really well. It's You can cook on your stove, you can cook in the oven, you can cook over a campfire. It's heavy, but you know what? It does the job, and it's going to last forever. So I'm just adding my pancetta, and I buy it pre-cubed. And it doesn't take a lot. It's just to give that little bit of flavor, and it's going to melt down and give a little bit of fat as well. Pork tenderloin can be a little bit dry, but if it's cooked right, it can be really nice and tender. Um lots of flavor and there's no two ways about that it's just most people tend to overcook it uh, I know when I was growing up if we had a pork roast if we were having pork chops <laughs> I knew they were gonna be so dry but today the pork is a lot leaner it's a lot better for you than it used to be and it tastes really, really good. So it's just, I'm trying to work around the camera here. <laughs> I still haven't got the cameras that I ordered. Amazon is taking forever with them. Uh, so I'm still using a webcam and I picked up a car phone holder for my web camera and it seems to be doing the job. Who doesn't love the sound of bacon cooking, eh? <laughs> I 
I, I hope the micro microphone's picking up that sizzling sound. Now I see there's not a lot of fat or grease in that bacon. So what I am going to do is just give it... I know it looks like a lot, but it's been about a teaspoon of butter. Plus that's going to add a lot to the flavors. This filling I'm doing, I'm just doing, like I said, a pancetta, some apples, and a bit of seasoning. But you could stuff it however you want. Uh, you can make a savory stuffing like you would at the holidays with some bread, some celery, onions, uh, sage. All would be really, really nice. You could use other fruits. I know dried apricots work really, really well with pork. It'd be so nice if everyone can smell right now how this smells because it's just incredible. We're going to add the apples. And these are going to break down and almost become like an applesauce mixed in there. My stove's clean, so I don't mind if something falls out. I am not doing so good this morning, am I? Okay. While that's cooking down, we're going to get the pork tenderloin prepped. So we're going to try once again. And move the camera back. And there we go. Now... You can do this exact same dish for those of you who are vegetarian or don't like the sight of raw meat, I'm sorry, but kind of have to see raw meat when you're cooking. So it's something you get used to. What I'm going to do is I've chosen a nice flat side. Okay, we're just going to take with a sharp knife. I'm using a little paring knife. And we just cut a little pocket into it. I'm going to try not to go all the way through. There we go. Now, you've always got this thin little end that tends to dry out. So, a nice little trick. Just fold it in and put it in with your other pocket. This way, when it's all rolled up, it's all the same size. Now, wipe off my hands. Now, there's also when we can add a little bit of seasoning here. I'm just stirring up bacon and apples. For the apples, I'm using Cortland's because they break down really nice. They've got a really nice sharp flavor, but you can use anything. If you want to use Golden Delicious, Red Delicious, Macintosh, <coughs> whatever you like, go for it. There's no wrong apple to use. Some will hold up a bit better, some will be a little bit crispier, but they're still going to taste great. In my pork, one thing I find pork likes and does really well with is salt, like all meats, but pork, I find can always use a little bit more. It looks like I'm putting on a lot, but this is an Italian sea salt. It's very, very fine, and it's going to do a lot to help season everything. The other thing we're going to add is a bit of black pepper. That just makes things taste really good. Now we've got a lot of sweet from the apples. And we've got nice flavor from the pork. 
And everyone these days like sweet and salty, spicy and sweet. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is actually go for a little bit of heat. And I'm going to try to get this in camera and it's not going to work. It's going to be stubborn. But this is ghost pepper salt. This stuff is hot. <laughs> but it has such a great flavor. And it really doesn't take a lot. I don't know how well the camera picks up what I have in my hand there, but that is enough to season all of this. Ghost peppers are hot, but it, they add a lot of flavor too. This was actually sent to me from one of you, from one of my subscribers. They live in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, and it's a local spice company that does custom blends of spices. Whoop, and it's good. There we go. We're back in focus. Um, and they make excellent things. They sent me this. They sent me one called Gator Bites, which is a little smoky, spicy seasoning that tastes really, really good. I keep checking. My apples are starting to go a little bit brown. So again, we will try and move this back. I thought about setting up another camera as well today, going for three, but you know what? <laughs> I can only do so much. So you can see the apples are starting to take some color. They're getting nice and soft. That pancetta has cooked up really, really nice. And you know what? That is done. So I'm going to turn the heat down a bit. We're going to get my spoon, if I can remember where I put it. And now, what's in here is going to go into our tender one. So once again, we move back. Try to move back without this doing that. So very sorry. <laughs> Oops. Food Network, this isn't. I'm sure this is how cheaply Food Network would love to shoot their shows, but <laughs> that ain't going to happen, eh? So as you can see, we're just putting as much of this stuffing filling, stuffing, however you want to call it, into the tenderloin. There we go. It looks nice. It's got some really nice flavors going on. Now, if you have bacon, you can wrap this whole thing in bacon can also wrap it in uh, edit number two. <laughs> you can also wrap this in some nice ham. Uh, I've done this, in fact I did it last night as a test. I wrapped it in prosciutto and that was really really good. It came out nice and crispy, almost as if almost as if it was a crispy bacon. Now Back in that same pan that I just used, we're going to add just a splash of oil, just so nothing really sticks, and it will help everything brown up. And once again, we try a move, and yes, I still have a bit of my apple filling in there, but that's fine. And we take our tenderloin right back into the same hand. Why mess up extra dishes if we don't have to? Now what I have is my oven is preset to 425. Nice and warm. We take our stuffed tenderloin. That goes into the oven. We don't need to see the stove now. That'll go into the oven at 425 for roughly 
15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a little break, let that cook, and when it's ready, we'll pull it out and we'll do the big reveal. Till then, we'll see you all soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. <laughs> it's only been a few seconds for you. It's been about 13 minutes here. I checked on the tenderloin and it's all ready. So what we've done is we've pulled it out of the, of the oven and you can sort of get a look at it there. Camera's being awkward, it doesn't want to focus, but you can see it's all nice and cooked. I cooked this to an internal temperature of 140 degrees. I know that way it's fully cooked. It's at a nice medium rare, which is fine for pork. It'll still be nice and juicy. I'm trying to get this to focus, and it's going to be stubborn. Oh, there we go. It's going to be nice and juicy. There's the timer telling me dinner is ready. <laughs> I've let this rest for a few minutes before I came back on as well. So now when we cut into this, we've got that gorgeous interior. Of course now the camera doesn't want to focus on it because of the steam, but everything is right there. Serve this with some mashed potatoes, some green beans, or some broccoli. I wish this camera would focus. It's being really stubborn. It's not showing you how nice it is, but I'm really sorry about that. You cut this up, nice little one and a half inch, two inch pieces, put it on a plate, like I say. Some garlic mashed potatoes would be incredible with this. Some nice string beans with bacon if you want, keeping up that whole pork thing. And there you go. So it took longer in the oven than it did on the stove. Or sorry, longer in the oven, I'll get this right eventually, than, than the prep did. All in all, under 25 minutes, including cooking time, and you've got a gorgeous home-cooked meal that you'd be more than happy to serve to anyone. As always, my name is Andrew. I am the 5 p.m. chef. Welcome to my kitchen once again. I hope you enjoyed, and please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I try and do a video every week, but real life stops that sometimes. But I will always put up as fast as I can. As always, till next time, enjoy.